I do consider myself a dementia expert. Now, what is an expert? An expert is someone who knows what they know. They have an idea of what they don't know, but have an idea where to find it. It certainly doesn't mean I know everything. Never, ever, ever. But I can ask the right questions or try to ask the right questions. Um, my interest in memory loss has been around for quite a while. But I, um, <laughs> I really got involved in what I'm doing when I screwed everything up with my mom. Okay? It's easy to teach this stuff, but when you're actually doing it, it's tougher than one would think. I think it's easy to talk about it, but when it's you that's dealing with it, what I found the hardest thing for me to do was to not try to drag mom into my reality, but go live where she was living and her understanding. So because I messed everything up, I then wrote a book. And the book is really for families, and it's about how can we have you capture the neat things to talk about with your loved one so that we don't maybe fall into some of the traps. And we're going to talk a little bit about the traps, okay? The first issue is really that memory loss in our country, I believe, is at an epidemic proportion. And as I talk to you, I'm not necessarily, I don't know about your own personal family members, if they have dementia or not, that's not important. But I got a captive audience who know other people. And so anybody that I can get on the team to help other people, you know, so I've got one more step for you, and that's to maybe work with folks in your church or in your neighborhood or that kind of thing. Problem we've got is we look at dementia as the elephant. I look at dementia as the elephant in the room. It's absolutely at epidemic proportions in our country, but because we can't fix it, we don't, we don't want to talk about it. You remember, you remember in the old days when people had cancer? We whispered, you know she's got cancer. Remember that? We'd call it the big C. We, we were scared because we couldn't fix it. Well now, we were laughing the other day, you turn on the TV and we got ads for the drugs you can get if the chemo's bothering you too much. I mean, you know, it's changed drastically because cancer is, even though it, it hits different areas, it's a cell that, or cells that go goofy. And so I can figure out what to do. Our problem with memory loss is there's not one reason there's over 100. So I can't identify. Now we call a lot of, of the memory loss, we call it Alzheimer's and I'll tell you why. There, is no other bill, there was no other billing code. So if a physician saw your loved one and there were some memory problems, they tagged it Alzheimer's so they could get paid. Now they've got a new one called mild cognitive impairment. So now they have two. So you're gonna to start to see more and more of that popping up. And I'm not, I'm not being negative of the physicians. We don't know. We just don't know, and so I understand they need to be paid. But what's happened is we've gotten kind of this skewed view that it's all Alzheimer's. I don't really much care, to be totally honest with you, what the problem is, unless you're a researcher. Now, if some of you are researchers, that's a different story. But very simplistically, I feel there's three kinds of memories. In our, we each of us has this. First one is what we call functional memories. This is the reasoning. This is the comprehension. This is conscious. This is the first kind that we see kind of decline for us, alrighty? Um, this is how do I get from here to the grocery store and home? This is how do I make the microwave work? Does that make sense? It's those kind of, how do I do the checkbook? It's the comprehension, cognition, and those, that's usually the first place where we'll see it. You know, one of the places, I don't know if I told you this, Irene, one of the places where I see, I think, I wish I liked research, I'd research it. You research it. <laughs> she likes research. Um, <laughs> is I think restaurants are one of the first places we can kind of get a clue maybe we've got a little problem because we're all sitting here we've all got our menu and I'm having some memory problems and so we're all sitting here and we're all leafing through the menus. Do you guys have Cracker Barrels? When they have, Bob Evans, they have 50,000 things on the menu, TGI Fridays. I mean they've got so many and so we're all sitting here and we're all sitting here and you're saying, well, she said she's going to have what, what, and somebody turns to me and they say, what are you going to have? And I go, well, I don't know because it's, I can't deal with it. So I wait until one of you decide and I go, I'll have that too. Now, when I do that, it's because I'll eat anything, okay? So, and, and I like to talk too much to take time to read the menu. So if it's me, <laughs> that's that. But I wonder, I wonder, question mark, does that help us? Because that's this, okay? The second kind of memory is procedural automatics, automatic memories. 
these are, there's really no conscious control. This is eating, driving, and riding a bike. Anything I've learned to do, I can continue to do. The first one that leaves, begins to move away is that comprehension one. This is the second guy that kind of gets himself going. And in case you ha have a friend who's dealing with probably the toughest issue when folks are still at home, and that's driving, okay, I'll give you a little piece of advice. When you're talking to someone who has memory loss, and because of the cognitive problems, the, co of the comprehension problems, it's scary that they're driving anymore. We've got to be a little careful. We ne never do we want to say to them, you can't drive anymore, because let's think through that. I can still drive. I can still do the procedural piece. <coughs> and the minute you tell me I can't do this, I get fussy with you. So what, you, what I recommend you say is, oh, I know you can still drive. That's not even the question. But you know what happened? The other day, I was out on 410, and this car cut me off. I had to make a split-second decision. It was really scary. And many times they'll go, I'm having a little trouble with those decisions, too. Does that make sense? The issue isn't the mechanical driving. It's the comprehension kind of stuff. And many times that works a little bit better then you can't drive anymore. So I really think we need to like not say that because it's, it's confrontational because I can. I know how to use the brake. I know how to, I know, but it's the problem. My mom actually got in problems with driving when the police found her driving down the wrong side of the road. She was driving just fine, but she was in the wrong spot. Okay. So, so now those are two kinds of memories. And the third kind of memory is this one. This is unconscious, it's absolute gut reaction. It is cued by something else that's going on. This one stays with us until about 12 and a half seconds before we finally say so long for now. Alrighty. Um, this is where we really can help as family members, as caregivers. So this is really the part that I talk about most. Now I know none of you have this, but I can be honest, I have this. <clears throat> there are some people in my life that I don't like. I can't remember why I don't like them. All I know is when I see them, I, I don't like them. It's the unconscious. It's in here. Something happened somewhere, and I'm going, sure wish I could figure out why I don't like them. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's that, actually that unconscious. So this is where we can make the biggest, biggest, biggest impact. And like I say, this one stays with us forever. Okay? Why do we even care about this? and this is exactly what you folks were talking about in terms of the, the goals of this organization, this group, it's all about relationships. It's all about sharing information. It's all about getting us all on the same team. And what I want to look at are family members, the person themselves who is receiving the care, and the staff. I need all three of those components on the same wavelength. On, I want everybody to know, for instance, Linda, I want everybody to know what's the deal with your pins because what a conversation starter. What a great conversation starter. Look how long we talked. Mm -hmm. Some cool things, even with you losing it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's some, it, but that's one of the things that if all of us know that, we are so ready to move forward. One of the things that I talk about a lot is when, with people with memory loss, I don't know if I'm right or not, but I kind of make this up. Have you ever driven down the road and you drove into a fog? It was foggy. In a nanosecond, what happens? You're going, I, I, did I, if I slow up, somebody will hit me from behind. No, if I go too fast, I'll hit somebody. Wait a minute, am I in the right lane? No, wait a minute, did I pass my exit? I mean, 50 million thoughts real quickly go running through your mind. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I kind of think in my mind that having memory loss is like constantly living in that kind of a fog. I can't quite see I can't quite understand what's around here. So one of the most important things that we've been talking about um, and we'll continue to talk about this week is what can we as staff members do? What can you as family members do? Family is easier for you, but we need your help so we can do it. Is I want to be able to say, let's pretend for a second I'm a staff member. And I see, Billy, I see your pin. And I say to you, tell me about that pin. Now, if you don't know me because we haven't really met, but the first thought I hope that goes through Billy's, your mind is, she must know me. I'm not totally alone here. There's somebody that knows me because she asked me again about that pin and asked, said she thought it was 60 some years old. Does that make sense? It's the whole idea of being able by what I say to in our jargon today, have her back, have your back. 
Okay? And so that's what we've been talking a lot about is what information do I need from families in order to have that component. This is all real simplified, but is my, in my world, I think the brain has two jobs. Number one is to make the best sense of what's going on that I can possibly make. If this works for all of us, this is not about dementia, this is about us. For instance, have any of you ever tripped out in public and perhaps fallen down? What was the first thing you said? Who pushed me? <laughs> Make the best sense. This wasn't my fault. Yes. So, and somebody says, Did, are you okay? And you go, oh yeah, I'm fine. You have two broken legs. What? Yeah. Do you, are you with me? Because our brain wants us to stay in control. Think in terms of if I have dementia, I'm having a little trouble with that control piece, but I still want to be able to do that. So sometimes we'll get answers to questions that don't quite seem to make a lot of sense, but I'm trying my very best. I'm, this is all, this is the best I can do to answer this question. So that's one thing. And then the second one is to keep us safe. And I don't mean physically safe. I mean emotionally safe. I don't want to fail. I don't want to say things and have you go, that's not right. I don't, I don't know as it is. Okay. And so those are the two things we talk about all the time. It, you're not researchers, so we're all set. When we look at cognitive loss, it's real simple, real simple. Short-term memory loss. I'm done. I'm done. I don't care what the cause is. I don't care if it's, uh, you had a stroke. I don't care if you got Alzheimer's. I don't care. The bottom line is you have short-term memory loss. And I think the day it really hit me is I was speaking in North Dakota and I, we, I was keynoting and there was another keynoter and we both have books. So we're sitting next to each other and we're signing books, you know, how that goes. And he, he well, well, he's still alive, I'm sure. Carl Mecklenburg, if you're a football person, he was with the Denver Broncos. All righty. I don't like football. I don't understand football, but I love to talk. And we're probably sitting as close as Irene and I are sitting and I want to say something to him, but I can't think of anything intelligent to say. And I look over and he's got this big hugger ring, okay, Super Bowl ring. Um, but I wasn't even sure that's what that was, and I'm pretty uncomfortable. So finally I said to him, hey, Carl, I got an idea. Why don't we swap books? He's got a book about how to be the best you you can be. I got a book about how to talk to someone that has memory loss. They're a little different. So we signed the books and we passed, and I'm still a little uncomfortable. So I said to him, um, what, I know you don't need that book right now, but you might have a grandma or a grandpa or, you know, someone in your family. This might be beneficial for you. And I was looking down when I said that, and he said, my wife needs it now. And I thought he was being funny. So I looked over, and those are not funny eyes. And I said, Carl, what do you mean? And he said, I've had five very serious concussions, and I'm losing my memory, and I'm scared to death. Whew. And then I remembered that the week before I was there, this was happening, that uh, Junior Sale, another football player, had killed himself. And so I said, wasn't that sad uh, last week about Junior? And he said to me, I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm laughing because it was so ironic. He said to me, well, you know, he's a friend of mine, and he said, you want to know why I shot himself in the chest and not in the head? And I thought, you know, this is getting way too deep. <laughs> for, for I just said, let's trade books. I, I didn't want to get into this big conversation. I said, no, I didn't. He said he was also having memory loss, and he wanted to save his brain for research. That was, it was like I did it yesterday. It was a day, it doesn't make any difference. Whatever reduces blood flow to the brain can potentially result. So that's why I can't fix it, because I can't figure out which one of these problems it is. So all I got to do is figure out, we're just going to learn how to live with it successfully. So short-term memory loss there, we're done now. We got that. Here's the big thing. I've told the staff this a million and 27 times. I've said, please do not ask a person with short-term memory loss a short-term memory question. It's not helpful at best and it's kind of mean at worst. And we've been actually doing that with the staff. You know, I, I'll find somebody and you know, kind of pick on them a little bit. Because here, and you say, well, I got that, I got that. But let's talk about where we can get into trouble so fast and we really didn't mean to. Hi, how are you? That is a conversational comment. And I, but I bet if you asked me that, you really didn't want to know about the fungus under my toenails, did you? Were you interested in the fun No, you weren't. Nobody seems to be. I can't tell anybody about it. But for someone with short-term memory loss, it's a real question. And I don't know the answer. And many times, 
as family members, we say it because we're trying to make conversation. <coughs> and then we get, they're trying their best, they're trying their best to give me an answer that makes sense. Remember back to the brain thing? So they'll say things like, um, I, um, well, my bowels aren't working very well. They'll come up with something. I'm having a lot of pain. Maybe it's true and oftentimes it's not because I pulled it from someplace, okay? And then you as family members go, oh my golly. All right, so unfortunately, that question will help the person with dementia fail once. Then we say, what you have for breakfast? Um, I, I don't even remember. It was only an hour ago and I don't remember it at all. So I say to you, they don't feed me here. I haven't had anything to eat for weeks. And so you as family member, hot footed over to management and go, why aren't you feeding my mother? And they say, yes, we are. And you say, no, they're not. And okay. So these are the questions we really don't want to ask. So the, we, now we've had a little problem here twice. My loved one has failed. And then we say, what'd you do yesterday? And at that point, I just kind of wish you'd go away because you're making me feel stupid. And I'm not stupid. I was a speaker. I was a teacher. I was a very successful homemaker. And, and I can't answer any of these very simple questions. So it sounds easy. It's tough. Well, I find. How am I going to get rid of these? What am I going to talk about? So let's look and see. The next thing I want to say before we get to look and see is one of the hardest things for us is you need to learn to give them up. Excuse me, what are you talking about? I really don't mean that. I say that to make sure everybody's awake. What I really mean is give up your expectations of them, okay? Because they always did all the bills or they always did this or with my mom, she was my go-to person. I know you're going to, Irene, you're going to find this tough to believe, but sometimes my mouth opens up and I say things to people that make them mad, sometimes. And so I would call mom and go, guess what I've done? And she'd go, that's okay, honey, you like people. I mean, she really was my, my backup. And so I'd call her. It made, it made no sense anymore. She couldn't even comprehend why, what I was trying to tell her. So tough for me. Okay, so first I need to give up those expectations. But that gives me some room to put in some stuff like, what are their strengths? And one of the things I ask family groups, if there were a bunch of us, we can certainly do it here with, us, with our group, what are their strengths? And sometimes... The loss of memory is so devastating that we forget they're still in there somewhere. And what are their strengths? And so I'll say to family members and to staff, what are their strengths? Um, one of their biggest strengths, as we were playing around with it, is long-term memory. I'm still in here, come find me, is, is the subtitle of this. Their long-term memory <coughs> is solid. Got to tell you this. Irene, <coughs> let's assume I have memory loss, and Irene called me up yesterday morning, and she said, I'm going to come over and get you about 10 o'clock. Let's go to breakfast. Well, heck, I'll eat anywhere, you know. That's how I am. And so I said, okay, fine. And I took that piece of information. I have two drawers. I have a short-term memory drawer and I have a long-term memory drawer. I put that right here in the short-term memory drawer. There's only one problem. My short-term memory drawer has no bottom. Okay. This one's got a good bottom. All right. So I put it in there, and the day's over. And this morning she shows up at 10 o'clock, I'm still in my pajamas. And she goes, well, why, you're not ready to go. And I said, well, I certainly wish you'd have called me. If you'd have told me that we were gonna go out, I'd have been ready. And she says, yes, I did. And then we have a little argument because I go, no, you didn't. Okay, because I don't remember it. So we don't want to do that part. But anyway, so she says to me, okay, just go ahead and get ready. I'll just wait right here, let's go. So we go out to breakfast and we're sitting there and I love to talk. There's nothing in that drawer over there. So I look over here. And I pull out the story about the, what I had in my lunchbox the first day when I went to kindergarten. And I start to explain to her that mom always put ketchup on my bologna sandwiches. And sometimes the ketchup soaked the bread. And she's going, I don't get this. She couldn't remember that I called her less than 24 hours ago. And now she's talking about a bologna sandwich with um, ketchup on it. That's right, because that's in my long-term drawer and that bottom is solid. So as staff members, what we are dying to get is what's in this long-term memory drawer <coughs> that we can use here to engage them and to be able to say to them and by our words, I got your back. I know you, okay? Um, strength. Long-term memory is a big one. What about humor? Big strength. 
But we need to know, we as staff members, what, what do they think is funny? What, you know, guys like jokes, women like stories, music. What are their favorite songs? I can hum along if I can get the tune okay, to the favorite song. And I don't have to be able to sing the whole thing. I can sing a couple verses or a couple lines. I'm all set to go. But again, what does that say to the person? <coughs> you know me. You know me or you wouldn't have been singing that you are my sunshine thing. You were singing there. Okay? Um, if they have a spiritual base, that stuff is hardwired. That is absolutely hardwired. I've done a lot of work with falls mitigation. And one of the, the easiest falls interventions <laughs> is a Bible. Well, only if they're spiritual. If they're, not, if they're an atheist, don't give them a Bible. It doesn't work. But if they're a spiritual person, what did we learn about the care and feeding of Bibles when we were kids? Don't let that thing fall on the floor. So if I want Irene to not be jumping up until I can get over to her, the simple task of putting a Bible on her lap. When she's ready to get up, she's going to pick it up and go, and now I can get there and now I can work with her. I know you say, oh, silly, but it works like a charm. And I'm playing to old memories, okay? Songs, verses, Bible verses, um, poems that have a spiritual base. For, for folks that have a spiritual being, it's very comforting. But again, I don't know that unless you can tell us. Mom loved, my mother-in-law loved that footprints. Okay, loved that. And unless you got into her house and saw the footprint posters, not posters, but pictures and stuff, I'd have never known that, but wow. I mean, all you had to do was bring that up and she just beamed. She just loved it, okay? And those are the strengths that we can utilize as staff members, but we gotta have you help us, okay? Um, those are the big, the big strengths. And do we play to them? We've gotta play to them. And many times as family members, we're so distraught by what's missing, we forget there's still a lot of stuff still there and we, we can make their life, as we have left, enjoyable. What do I say, don't say? You've seen this old guy before. <laughs> what, what do I say not to say? Number one is no. But I could be wrong. Who here likes to be told no? Just tell me, just raise your hand, we'll be all set to fly. Look at you, no, I'm not gonna say that to you, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, no, nobody wants to be told no. And so what we say many times is when they give us information to try to answer one of our short-term memory questions. We go, no, no, you remember. And we didn't, weren't trying to be mean, but you told me I was wrong and not wrong. And if you've ever made the mistake, I'll raise my hand. If you ever made the mistake, you get in like a big, big trouble <laughs> because the person will come, will lash out because I don't, I know I'm not wrong. The other thing not to say is, do you remember? Whoa, this one's a toughie. Particularly if on the I'm on the front end of my memory loss journey, I know I'm having trouble remembering. And when you say, do you remember? You don't have to get any more words out. My blood pressure goes up, my pulse goes up, and I can't even hear what the rest of the thing you said because I, I was so afraid I'd fail the question. So actually the name of my book is I Was Thinking. But what I say is, I can say the same thing. But instead of saying, do you remember the time we went to the store and got... Where was I? Where was I? It was in Canada. In Canada, they sell orange ice cream with a licorice, licorice strip through it. I forgot its name. Tiger. They call it tiger ice cream. I can't find it anywhere. They only make it in Canada. It's good if you like licorice. Anyway, um, and so if I were going to talk with my husband and we had been there, I would say to him, do you remember that time we went to Canada and got the tiger ice cream? By the time I got done with you, remember, he wasn't listening anymore, okay? I can say the same thing like this. I was thinking that we had visited in Canada once and got something called tiger ice cream. You see, it's the same story, but the front end is just a little different. When I say, do you remember, it puts all the responsibility on him. When I say, I was thinking, it's my story, and he can go, I don't remember that, or yes, I do and nobody loses face, as we say. So now I say, don't do this and don't do this, and oh, for heaven's sakes, what are we gonna do? And this is where we really are needing your help. What we need to learn about the residents is some things that are wonderful conversation starters, starting with, what do they like to see? Simple stuff. 
Maybe I love a gray sky with just that glitter of sun coming through. Maybe I love flower petals to see them. Does that make sense? Real simple stuff. Many times I say to families, <clears throat> let's say that you know me and you know that I grew up um, with um, a Labrador Retriever and I love my Labrador Retriever and we know his name was Harley and we've got all that. Um, but you come in to talk to me today and rather than saying a short-term memory thing, you could say to me, on the way in here this morning, saw somebody walking a beautiful black lab. You didn't see someone walking a beautiful black lab. But to me, that's cool. And I'll go, well, I used to have a lab, and the conversation will start, or I'll go, oh, that's nice. And we move on to something else because that didn't trigger for me. Because we're like, we're all human beings. One day it'll work, the next day it doesn't work so good. You know, I like, I like that tiger ice cream, but I don't want it every meal. So we need several of these so I can try a, a few, okay? So what do they like to see? And the more you can tell us, we can say the same thing. We can say the same thing. Saw a beautiful lab. Somebody was walking them on the street today. I, I, I didn't see the lab either, okay? But I want this person to know I got their back. I know them, okay? What do they like to smell? Smells are extremely, who was it? Who was it that got enticed into eating food? Mm -hmm. It's you, okay? Got enticed into eating because of the smells of breakfast this morning. And we do things like popcorn or make bread, anything that will take me back. What are we doing? We're going back to long-term memory. What does that smell mean? If you know me, you will know that I can't tolerate roses. I don't like roses. I think they smell like dirty feet. Okay. Oh, they're pretty enough if you put them over there. But if you want to really be nice to me, buy me a carnation. A lot less expensive. They hook to every good thing in my life. Confirmation, you know, all the different things that happen to me. I love the smell of carnations. And I'm, it's cheaper <laughs> to be nice to me. Okay. What do they like to taste? And we got to be a little careful with this one. If you say to me, what do you want to eat? I will tell you, I want rye bread with a great big slab of Bermuda onion and Limburger cheese. Love Limburger cheese. Salt and pepper. Got to have salt and pepper. Um, there's only one problem. Most nursing homes, most facilities, most restaurants don't have it. <laughs> okay? And you say to yourself, well, that won't be a problem. She won't remember. That I'll remember. Isn't that interesting? We don't understand how it works. But I thought when you asked me, I got so excited about the Limburger cheese. They never brought it to me, okay? So what we need to say is, would you like sausage or bacon? Give me a choice, and if I'm having a little trouble, you go, this sausage is really good today, you know, and help me, but don't take my ability to make decisions away, okay? What do they like to touch? Is there a favorite um, blanket? Is there a favorite piece of clothing? We wear what we wear because we like the way it feels. We like the way we think we look in it. Okay, so what do we, each one of these are phenomenal tools as conversation starters. Hey, I don't know if it's okay with, if, can I just, this, I just love, can I touch your shirt? Wow, love that feel. Are you with me? Hook in, hook in, hook in. Don't ask those short-term memory questions. And what do they like to hear? And that's back to, is it a joke? Is it a song? Is it what, you know, do I like the, this morning, we walked out on the patio zero dark 30 after we were finished teaching and Irene said listen to the birds it was beautiful and they were all chirping and waking up okay I love that sound I just love it so we sat out there and had some coffee and did some talking okay and those are the things that I'll remember when I leave here that make life worth living okay now you're going to say to me I'm not stupid I understand those are all the senses and that's exactly what it is that's how we interact with the world and so as family members, you can really help us gather some of that data so we're ready to roll, okay? You doing okay? Okay, good. All righty. Because what I want, and what I've said to the staff all day long, or all week long so far, is our job <coughs> as staff members is to help people every day feel useful and successful. And when I say to you, can you tell me about where the heck did you get the Limburger? Okay, I can feel successful because I'll explain to you where 
we get the Limburg. There's a place in Wisconsin, and there's one store in Toledo that sells it. So I go in and I buy. <laughs> it's that creamy, and I don't like the other kind. I buy four containers of Limburger because I don't want the store to stop carrying it. <laughs> so I have all these things of Limburger in my refrigerator. Okay, so it's simple. It's not difficult stuff. But if you have these, and what I say to people is, before you call up, before you stop over, get your <clears throat> make a list someplace. Buy my book. See, that's a subliminal. You didn't know, hear that. Um, <clears throat> but all my book is is really a workbook to capture this information. Get yourself two or three stories that you want to talk about. No more than three. You come in and we try one. It doesn't work. We try two. It doesn't work. We try through. You hook on. Let's roll. Let's talk about this. You try three and it doesn't work. You know what? You probably need to go to the restroom or you need to go get a cup of coffee. Alrighty. One of the things we're talking about with the um, facility is there's a phenomenal couple of really good tests that will tell you what's left. How, where is their memory? It's interesting that we do enough tests to choke a horse on every other condition. You know, whether it's pancreas or whether it's lungs or whether it's heart. And when we get to dementia, we kind of look at it like a switch. They got it, they don't. It's just like everything else, there's a, there's a progression. And we've not spent as much time as I think we should determining where are they and then how do we bolster that which is what we do with everything else. If we find how your heart's working, then we're going to give you meds and bolster that. Well, this isn't meds, but this is support. Make me feel useful and successful. And my, I, I can get that as the progression as slow as I can get it. I can't stop it and I can't make it go away, but I can help. Okay. So those are those. Now, here's a few more things. We are getting all kinds of jobs. We're going to ask you to help us with all kinds of stuff. And that's stories. I want you to be able to say, Here's, and I'm really into pictures. And so I would say to the families, what's this? And the, they said to me, this is a picture of dad loved this because the um, Air Force flew over and they were making, I don't know if you can see it. It's the letters USA <coughs> in planes. <coughs> okay. And all I need to say, <laughs> have you? Yeah, it's at Randolph Public School. Do you, I was going to say you work for, with the military, don't you, for something you said that made me think of that. Where is that? In, in, is it really? Yeah. Well, am I good? Yeah. yeah, wish I'd have known that ahead of time. <laughs> Tell me where it is again. Randolph, here in San Francisco. Randolph, okay. It's Randolph Air Force Base? It is Randolph Air Force Base, but they will call it now Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, but Randolph Air Force Base. Okay, oh, thank you. I never knew where I just found that picture somewhere. If I've stolen it and I shouldn't have, don't tell them I got it, okay? All right, that's a secret. I don't know that. Um, I love this one. Because this I can say to my sister, hey, I was thinking about that little neighbor girl we had looked just like her dog. <laughs> okay. Pictures are wonderful long-term memory reminders. And if we can get fun ones. How about this one? Mom, I was thinking about that you told me that you could be able to get a shoe f shoes for $1.77 a pair. Okay. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Pretty, 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 pretty nice looking shoes, actually. Not so bad. One of the ladies, we did some, some books, and one of, the lady, one of the ladies' stories, I think it's, I use it all the time. I read so tired of hearing it, I've told everybody, but I love it. She was working, and she came home from work one day, and her husband was making tuna patties, but they wouldn't stick together, and he's all mad, and he's trying to smush them, and they won't work. She went out to the garage to see what the heck was going on. And she found the container. It was cat food. <laughs> he grabbed the wrong container. <laughs> okay. But all you need to say to her is, I was thinking you like tuna patties. And she starts to laugh, and then she'll tell you the story. Useful, successful. And she's very successful because she made me laugh. All righty. Stories. So these are the kinds of things that if we get rolling, as I'm hoping we will get rolling, those are the kinds of questions you might be being asked to help with because these are things there's no way we as staff could ever ever know. Now this is <clears throat> my own personal belief and I think I like to tell families don't say goodbye. Okay now that's me. Goodbye to me is too final like goodbye. I like love you see you later. Alrighty. Um, and for some, so, oh I didn't tell you this, for some people get something in your head <clears throat> that makes logical sense. Remember back to the job of the brain making sense? Um, so I say, make some logical comment as to why you would be leaving. I've got to stop and pay the light bill. I've got something I need to do. Because <clears throat> otherwise you say goodbye and they go, don't leave. And then you get into a kind of an uncomfortable 
how do we how do we get apart? Well, the funniest story of the whole world, I think. I was doing some work in Hawaii. Well, somebody had to do it, and <laughs> I volunteered. Okay, and there was an ombudsman. His name's John, and um, <clears throat> I did all this stuff. And he was working with a group of um, social work students. So he called me one day and he said, okay, I want to get together. I want to get a teleconference with you. We've looked over your DVDs. We've looked at your stuff and I want to talk with these students about it. I said, okay, fine. He said, we'll call. It'll be noon here. It's six o'clock in Ohio. I said, all right. So we call and we're talking and you've already figured this out. I love to talk and sometimes I talk too much. And so I'm talking and I'm talking and I'm talking. And finally John said, oh, Diana. I said, yeah. He said, I'm, I'm so sorry, but we do need to cut this short. He said, I've got to get to the store and get some kitty litter before the store closes. And I went, oh, John, I'm sorry. I... And I said, John, it's noon where you are. And he went, yep. He said, but I listened, didn't I? I bought it hook, line, and sinker. And I said to him, you don't even have a cat. He said, nope, I don't actually, okay? <laughs> but it was a logical reason why we would have to stop this conversation, okay? And it truly works. Now, I gotta, I gotta give you a caveat. Will all this work 100% of the time? Uh, no, <laughs> we're all human beings and so, you know, but if I can, if I can change 1%, 10%, 20% of our interactions and be able to walk away smiling, I think it's worth it, okay? Now, this is for you folks. You gotta do your homework. And you've gotta capture those good comments. And I'll tell you why. Because if you don't capture what they like to see, smell, taste, touch, and hear, and the stories that make them happy, I'm I will guarantee you, your mouth will open up, just like mine did, and I'll ask a short-term memory question. Because that's how we talk. Story on me. A friend of mine had memory loss. Her husband had come over and we were talking. and. 4.30 he leaves. 6.30 at night, my husband and some friends went to a restaurant. As we're walking in, she and her husband are walking out. I did not realize I was going to see her. I know all kinds of stuff about her. She's a real, she was in real estate. She loved dogs. We had a lot of things we could have talked about. I wasn't ready. And so this one right here said, hey, what'd you have to eat? And I wish I'd had a video camera. Her eyes glazed over. She turned around and she grabbed her husband's arm. And I'm going, oh, Diana, you should have had a V8. And I'll stop it. So I tapped her on the shoulder and I said, I hear they have great food here. And she starts to turn back. And I, she goes, yes, I've heard that. And her eyes start to get a little more, less foggy. And I said, I am so hungry. And she took my hand and she patted it. And she said, well, you better get in there so you don't starve to death. And I said, oh, thank you so much. We all just, we all make mistakes. You've got to be ready. And so when I talk about homework, I really do mean, and that's what I've been telling the staff, we need to talk with the families. We need to learn this stuff. Now I need to practice it. I need to be able to walk in while we're doing bathing, while we're getting dressed, and say, I was thinking you used to um, be a quilter. Does that make sense? It's that kind of, that's how we work it all together. You guys are the most important people, and you've already said it. You can teach other families better than anybody else. Because, Lorelai, as you said, it's, it's somebody who's lived it can go, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the piece of that. Okay, so important. But that's why I want to be able to get to you, because I'd like you to share this information also, okay, to really make it work better for all of us. Now let's talk for just a moment about you. We don't know what causes, we, as we said, we got 10, uh, 10, 100 things that cause memory loss. We don't know how to stop it. We don't know how to fix it. We do know a couple things. We know that at least it won't hurt you. Physical exercise as well as mental exercises. Using your brains as much as you can possibly use them. Um, and then the interesting thing, any of you do Lumosity by any chance? It's an on, it's, I can't even remember what college it is. It's some college that's doing all kinds of research on memory. And they have computer games. I love computer games. They have computer games, but they're taking all the results. How are you feeling today? What's going on? Okay. And trying to figure out, do any of these help? Some are flexibility in thinking. Some are speed. Some are math. Some are, and their point is, don't, like, if you do Sudoku, don't just do that every day, every day, every day. Use a different hunk of your brain, then use a different hunk of your brain, and then use a different hunk. Will it fix it? Can't hurt. Can't hurt. 
Okay, so don't try to, or don't not do some of these things because we're not sure if it'll work. <coughs> it's worth a shot. Because here's our key. You guys are the key for your loved ones because what we're trying to get to is in addition, in, with that useful and successful, we want everyone to have a calm, contented day. And we have to really, truly lean on you guys to help us get to that. All right. Well, listen, these guys are really working hard. So questions, thoughts, comments that come into your brain, please, please, please ask. <laughs>